players the Bears should consider signing. And we talk a lot about, you know, players that might leave the Bears, players who we might be able to trade, but let's actually talk about some players that we could get in the door this offseason that will really shape this team into having a better opportunity for success next year. And we both came up with a list of three that seems to be, we each, you know, tend to do about three players because it seems like those are the, you know, the, the top guys, really the top guys, anything more than three from each of us, like six players is kind of stretching, you right. know, kind of going beyond what's probably possible. So we have three players, um, each of us. Reese, why don't you give us your, you know, your first player? My first player was uh, Tony Jefferson, and this might seem kind of like a, I don't know, a null like pickup, not, not really necessarily needed because, you know, he is a strong safety in the book. The Bears did pick up uh, Treshawn Gibson. So obviously I don't think Tony Jefferson would start. But at the same time, I think if, you know, what has gone on with all the opt-outs and which is how weird this year has been already, I think having depth is going to be a huge key to this uh, NFL season. And the Bears are absolutely loaded on defense. Perhaps the only place where they could use a little bit more depth is at that strong safety position. I know that they have uh, Dion Bush, who can kind of uh, kind of play both safety positions. He can fill in for either Eddie Jackson or Trishon if they were to go down. But I think picking up Tony Jefferson would give some extra veteran experience. Um, you know, he's someone that has experience playing in the NFC North, and you know, he's a quality player that I think the Bears could pick up for a reasonable contract, as he's still out on the market. Yeah, Tony Jefferson is someone who I also like as a potential future player for us as well. I believe he is a little bit younger than Treshawn Gibson, maybe three or four years. And he's someone who's played at a pretty decent level um, so far throughout his career and could potentially lead to some long-term stability at that strong safety position if we don't decide to go in the draft. So having a second option there and kind of being able to, you know, change them in and out, I'd be very excited for. I'm not a huge fan of Deion Bush. I think that he's played well, you know, in limited circumstances but ultimately i'd probably rather see us you know either add a guy in the future in free agency or through the draft so tony jefferson i'd be absolutely down for that especially with a season that we're probably going to see a lot of backups playing uh due to this whole coronavirus situation and then hey we we don't really talk about this either but with limited training time we're probably going to see an increase in injuries as well with players so oh definitely I can absolutely see that um, adding Tony Jefferson would be a potential benefit for the Chicago Bears. My first player that I have is someone who I actually really, really, really hope the Chicago Bears sign. And that's Devontae Freeman. He is the running back for the Atlanta Falcons or was the running back for the Atlanta Falcons. He's struggled with some injury issues that ultimately led to him being released from the team. Um, but as far as Devontae Freeman goes, he's someone who would be an extremely good in-between for David Montgomery and Tariq Cohen. He is a bigger built dude, but he's also very fast. And he's had a lot of high-level seasons. He's almost the perfect back for us in Chicago to go in between Tariq Cohen and David Montgomery. Now, he would also provide us, or I think that the Chicago Bears could provide him with an opportunity to lower his snap count, something he didn't have as much when he was in Atlanta, and kind of give him an opportunity to, you know, he would be more of our home run threat. He, with the added ability of, you know, obviously having some, you know, bigger size, able to break some more tackles than someone like Tariq Cohen. Um, And it would just be, I think, a home run signing for the Chicago Bears. I think I'd really like that signing the most for what it could do for Tariq, actually. I I think that bringing in Devonta Devonta Freeman could, you know, like you said, it's the perfect middle ground. And I think Tariq is good to get a couple carries here and there, maybe four or five a game optimally. Um, But, you know, hopefully it'll allow him to play out of the slot more, be used, maybe motion in and out, you know, from that slot into the backfield more. And you could also keep someone like Devonta Freeman back there um, who still keeps the defenses wary, probably is a little bit more of a run threat, and defenses are scared about him even still running in between the tackles or even busting it out wide. So I think that it could actually just add a lot more variability to the offense and really open things up a bit more. And, you know, it's not something we see in the NFL, you know, too commonly these days, but having a two running back set with him and Montgomery back there would be pretty pretty brutal. I mean, 
that'd be a big task for any team's linebackers. They have to try to keep, you know, keep both of them, you know, in their eyesights and have to account for them. And if you look at the way NFL defenses have really adjusted, so many teams have started adding so much, you know, money to their backfields and their pass rush and everything like that, that the art of defending the run is becoming more and more forgotten, you know, and I think we saw that this year with the 49ers, uh, the Tennessee Titans, and then also um, the obviously the Baltimore Ravens, they all have very enhanced and good running units, and they were able to be a highly effective offense. Now, this is kind of a regression of what we saw previously, but having a really balanced team is of the highest importance right now in the NFL. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we kind of had a period, I'd say, you know, three years ago where it seemed like the run game just disappeared. And yeah, I think it definitely led to you know, right, edge rushers became immensely valuable and teams are more concerned about sacking the quarterback than ever. And and, and for good reason, teams are still passing Mm -hmm. the ball a lot. But right, I mean, what we saw with Tennessee over last year, it just seems like people just did not know how to defend A, a zone running scheme, and B, someone like Derrick Henry running the football. They just, they had no business even stopping it didn't know how to stop it, which, you know, if you would have brought that up, you know, 15 years ago, people would be shocked that that could happen. But it just shows you how much this NFL game has changed. But like you said, having a good balance is more important than ever. You know, if you're able to run the ball effectively and also pass the ball effectively, you have the defense right where you want them. They're always going to be on their heels. And no matter even if you're losing a game, you know, you can come back and still use the balanced offense to uh you know come back or you know if you're winning the game you can manage it very well by using a, a good mix of running and passing to drain the clock and also keep moving the chains and one last statement before you go ahead and give us your second player Reese I want to mention is I'm really excited to see how Bill Lazor uses David Montgomery as well because he he used Joe Mixon pretty damn well I mean he got Joe Mixon over a thousand yards in his first two years both of them so I'm just excited to see that as well. And I think even adding someone like a Devontae Freeman could take a ton of pressure off of our other running backs. Tariq Cohen, I really only want to see him in a role where you play him when you want to play him, not when you have to play him. You know what I'm right. saying? And I think that he was used a little bit too much as a, you know, I have to play him type of player last year. Yeah, no, I agree with that wholeheartedly. So yeah, I'll move on to my next player, which is Eric Reed. So, you know, to Tony Ooh. Jefferson and with Eric Reed, it's kind of like my 1A, 1B as far as, like, you could probably sign either one of them and don't really need to sign them both. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eric Reed, someone that, you know, notably most recently played for the 49ers. I believe he was on Carolina last year. Just once again, kind of reiterating a little bit of the same points, just to get some more depth there on the back end. You know, the Bears are really stacked up at that corner position, and they have two great starters at safety. But, you know, you feel like injuries are going to happen this year and they're going to persist. And, you know, having someone back there that, you know, if they need to start, isn't going to feel that extra pressure. Don't really have to rely on someone like Deion Bush. Eric Reed could certainly jump in and, you know, really help carry that load and maybe even ease and ease people's minds as to not really having a liability there on the back end. I mean, he's going to be responsible and he's going to do what he needs to do. And you're not really going to have to worry about him in coverage. He's also not a bad tackler either. Yeah, absolutely. And I could... You know, again, reiterating everything I said before, I understand the desire to have more depth on the team. Um, and that's really the the big benefit of signing someone like Eric Reed, uh, of course. But another player that I would probably say, and I think it's would be a really good signing for us, is Josh Klein, guard for the Minnesota Vikings last year. Um, he's obviously a pretty high-quality player and someone that the Minnesota Vikings are certainly going to miss this year. Having him just as, you know, a good safety option as our guard. I mean, he would probably, I would assume he'd beat out Jermaine Effetti, but the Bears are just betting too much on Jermaine Effetti for me, for my preferences this year. So I would like to see them bring in a more, you know, veteran option, someone that we can trust a little bit better. I think Josh Klein is the perfect player to do that. I believe he's like 29 or 30. So he's still pretty young for an offensive guard. And I think we just add an abundance of consistency to this offensive line or worst comes to worst, add more, you know, depth to the line. Yeah. Yeah. I think with, you know, offensive linemen, sometimes a chain of ce- change of scenery can really help them a lot and they can kind of get a, uh, a boost in their career. You can see something that you haven't seen. I know with the bears and a you know, 
there's a lot of hope that you know moving him back to that guard position is really going to help boost his play. And hopefully the coach in Juan Castillo will only, you know, only, you know, advance that further. At the same time, you know, getting someone more proven like Klein, I would not be against that one bit. I'm with you on the case. I feel like we're banking a lot on Fetty just based solely on that he's someone that's new, right? You know, he's not someone that, you know, you would target and be like, oh, yeah, he's going to be a huge improvement right out of the box. It's mm. just it seems like people are kind of banking on him just because, oh, yeah, we haven't seen him, so we don't really know that he's going to struggle in this way or that way yet. You know, and, and maybe We're he betting will... a lot on his traits and his position change. Yeah, exactly, which, you know, maybe it will work out, you know, and it's, it's tough to keep your eyes away from the traits because when you see a lot of things that you want to see but just not really working out, you feel like you can kind of coach, coach that into him. But, yeah, I think picking up Klein and kind of bringing a little bit more steadiness to that offensive line is something you cannot argue against. So my last player that I had is someone that we talked about last week as far as replacing Eddie Goldman, and that is Damon Harrison or Snacks Harrison. Um, I think that, honestly, it's just the perfect drop-in fit for replacing Eddie Goldman. Uh, Someone that, like you said, it's difficult these days with defensive tackles because you do have the differences in what you want to see with 4-3 and 3-4 defensive tackles. And he would be able to slip right, at, right in on this defense into that 3-4 and, you know, provide a steady force. I mean, he's someone that the Bears are quite familiar with dealing, you know, as he, you know, was a divisional foe for many years. So I think that they could really benefit from bringing him in and, you know, having him along with Hicks and Roy Roberts and Harris and then your edge rushers of Quinn and Mac. that sounds awesome. Yeah, and I truthfully don't understand why the Bears have not made this move yet. It seems like one of the most obvious moves that the Bears should make this offseason unless he's somehow considering opting out or we just they just don't know what they're, you know, what's going on with him in some regard, which I can understand that. But Damon Harrison, he's obviously a high quality defensive tackle. Not as good as Eddie Goldman, of course, but he definitely provides something that this Bears team does not have currently. I was a little bit jealous when you told me that he was going to be on your list. Uh, I wanted to put him on my list, but again, another home run signing. I think him and, um, shit, hold on. I think that him and Devontae Freeman are both obvious and just obvious, obvious signings that we should make going into next year. So I'm going to go into my last player. Someone who comes with, you know, a decent amount of baggage. You can argue, though, if he deserves that label. Josh Gordon, I I think that there is probably no better team for Josh Gordon in the NFL right now besides the Chicago Bears. You know, Josh Gordon, what comes with him is tons of production, very talented player, but someone who can never stay on the field, not because of injuries, but because of his addiction problems, a lot of which came from marijuana, which has now been, you know, it's been legalized almost everywhere in the United States, but has been, is not going to be tested for in the NFL anymore. So we won't have to worry about his suspensions in that regard. And, you know, as Josh Gordon goes, he's a, like, people may make their judgments on him about, you know, being suspended a lot of the time. And what does that mean? If does he not value football that he can't, you know, do this or that? And, you know, addiction is obviously like a mental health issue. So I urge everyone to be, you know, kind to Josh Gordon in that regard. But besides that, um, and you and people can argue all they want, whether or not they believe, you know, weed is good, bad, whatever, whatever, right? But at the end of the day, Josh Gordon is a really good person. He's always someone that seems to have tried uh, to improve his life and someone who, you know, has obviously failed a lot. That tends to be the, you know, a common thing when it comes to addiction with people and, you know, players is it's it's not easy. It's, a you know, it's a, something that he's going to have to live with for the rest of his life. And, you know, now that it's legal, I mean, in the NFL at least, I don't see a reason why the Bears shouldn't offer him a contract. Him with Allen Robinson and Anthony Miller just seems like a home run trio for this team. I mean, we'd probably, it wouldn't surprise me if that trio could amount, could amount 1,000 yards each of them. Last time that was done was in like 2013 or so with the Cardinals. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Josh Gordon, I mean, I think a lot of people, it's been a while since he's been playing at his peak form. You know, he played, 
he played his best football with the Browns, and which is saying a lot because at that time he was catching passes from some of the worst quarterbacks in the league. Um, he is a dominant force. I mean, he was an elite wide receiver, and he still has a lot of that talent now. And you know, a lot of it has just been masked by having to sit out seasons and also mm-hmm. getting suspensions within the seasons. But he is someone that has plenty of talent. So I definitely understand that. I think that the Bears could, you know, if the Bears had three very solid wide receivers, this, you know, it'd be a lot for defenses to handle and it would only help out whoever is going to end up being the starting quarterback, be that Foles or Trubisky. Yeah, I mean, try telling a defense to cover Anthony Miller, Allen Robinson, and Josh Gordon. And I feel like in a way, those three also complement each other. They're not all similar wide receivers. They have different traits. They could be a little bit more dynamic from each other, but at the same time, that's a lot for defenses to have to handle and account for. So I think Josh Gordon, I'm with you. I mean, I think, you know, his, I guess, perceived character flaws, now they're basically, you know, it doesn't really matter with the point because what he's been suspended for in the past, he can't really be suspended for anymore. So, yeah, I have no qualms with bringing in Josh Gordon. Yeah, and it's kind of one of those things where I don't know if the Bears organization would like to do that because they people who you know they like to stand on the hill of bringing in quality you know character players. And personally, I wouldn't even attribute a bad character to Josh Gordon, but I understand the idea of him maybe not being the best teammate because he allows certain things to you know get ahead of him or whatever. I understand that in a way. But still, if I was a GM, I would be trying to bring in Josh Gordon if I was a Chicago Bears GM, for sure. Hey guys, like our video, subscribe, and check out our bi-weekly podcast on Apple Podcasts. Thanks.